Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Carly. Good morning. Yeah. What time is it there? Uh, 6.30. Yep, there you go. <laughs> You're morning, a rock star. Good morning, good morning. All right, guys, while we're waiting for a few more people to jump on, tell me something good. I had an accepted offer on a, on a listing recently that um, I wasn't expecting. It kind of came out of nowhere. So that was a, a good um, blow of confidence, I guess, and that things are still active here. So there you go. Carly, by the way, I know where here is because you and I are friends, but oh. some of the other people <laughs> right. here may not. So just so that people can reach out to you, agents that are on this call uh, can reach out to you if they got referrals. Uh, tell us where you are. Uh, I'm in Southern Oregon. I actually live in Ashland and service kind of a pretty wide uh, rural area that the biggest metropolitan area here is Medford, Oregon. Okay. Beautiful. It sounds beautiful. I've never been to Oregon, but I want to go. Well, that would be great. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know if I come so I can visit. Okay. All right, Hi, guys. Tell Hi, me. Yes, talk to me. It's hey, your Karen. favorite Karen from New Jersey. Yeah, I, 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 I saw you. I, I see you, Karen. I recognize your voice. <laughs> uh, so I have to tell you, I used all the stuff I learned yes, in yesterday's morning meeting mm. to talk to my buyers on the situation. So they feel very, actually more comfortable than ever before because of my thinking. But we presented an offer, but the agent is, has nothing between her ears because she doesn't seem to believe that we're going into a recession. Okay. <laughs> So she's in denial. That's cool. So is the seller, but yep, we try, seller. I tried. Okay. Karen, where in New Jersey are you from? I'm from Bergen County, New Jersey. So if you have any referrals outside of the New York City, like between uh, Alpine and the Lincoln Tunnel, I'll be more than happy. And if you don't know where it is in New Jersey, call me, text me or PM me, and I'll find you the right agent because I won't take anything on that's not my area. It's okay. I'm from Joycey. Where in Joycey are you from? <laughs> Ocean County. All okay, right, so guys, probably. moving on. The two of you can connect later. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, I want to, anybody else want to share really quick before we jump right into the conversation today? I had a quick, I had two quick wins. Here you go, Cindy. Um, submitted an offer on the house we showed earlier this week and okay. uh, nego negotiated back and forth. And basically with the seller kind of talking about what we did, they accepted the offer um, in Old Northeast, uh, less than they probably wanted, but you know, the, the sure thing, they came around. So, and it was a solid offer, but you know. And then the other super cool thing for me was uh, I had a stranger reach out to me on Facebook and in Messenger asking me about the market and, uh, and that she just got approved on March 12th before the shit hit the proverbial fan. <laughs> And um, so she was asking me, she said, I really like what you're posting, you know, but basically coming across like we are of working and, and providing knowledge and not fear. Yeah. So long and short of it is we have a 12 o'clock buyer consultation. She'd been talking to a realtor and someone had been referred to her and I asked her straight up, you know, I'm not going to interfere professionally and ethically. And she's like, well, someone started to do a search, but no, and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I thought it was great that uh, reminder that, you know, the vibe we put out is what we attract, right? And so it's a great opportunity. People are looking for, for information that is factual and calm and real, but also they're, they're people that need to buy. So love it. <laughs> love it. Good job, Cindy. Good job. All right, guys, I want to do a listing presentation for you today and we're going to start right away because I want to get through as much of the listing presentation as we can. Some of this is going to be repetitive for some of you because we've done this already uh, but like Zig Ziglar says repetition is the mother of learning so let's get started. I want somebody who has been a part of my 10-step listing class to raise their hand and be a uh, volunteer uh, to be my role play partner here. John, are, are you going to send us this recording as well? Yes. So, hi, Paula. Uh, hi. <laughs> some of you may have noticed that I am now downloading these videos onto YouTube, which is making it much easier for me to share. 
and have created a YouTube page specifically for that purpose. So I will send you a link to my YouTube page later today. And then if you check in on that YouTube page daily, there'll be new videos added to it. Not just these, but additional videos that I think a lot of, that all of you will find very valuable. Thanks so much, that is awesome. A hundred percent. All right, who's my volunteer? Before I pick somebody randomly. <laughs> Sorry. All right, Cindy, you're it. Cindy, I want you to be a seller who is moving for a job transfer or to get closer to family, but you're not just testing the market. You're going to sell. Can you be that person for me? Unmute yourself. So thumbs up. I'll do my best. <laughs> you're going to be great. You're going to be great. All right, guys. So here we go. Let's get started. Cindy, thank you so much for the opportunity. And, and again, guys, in time out. In real life, Cindy and I would be side by side on the screen. And it's a great uh, um, platform to have this conversation. What I'm finding is this is actually a lot more organic and a lot easier and natural than sitting at the kitchen table sometimes. Uh, we wouldn't have this gallery of people up here at the top watching, even though that would be fun. Uh, it would be just Cindy and I on the call. So we're going to go back and forth depending on who's talking, but just know in real life, it's just Cindy and I on the screen. So Cindy, thank you so much for the opportunity to meet with you today. Thank you for meeting with me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's an honor and a privilege to discuss the possibility of the DEETS team helping someone sell their home. And I'd like to start by sharing my mission statement with you. Would that be okay? Yes. Perfect. So Cindy, my mission is to meet your goals and exceed your expectations. Now, because of that mission, whenever I meet with a potential seller, one of three things typically happen. And one of those three things will happen today. Either number one, they understand and appreciate the benefits that I have to offer and they hire me, which is awesome. The second thing that occasionally happens is they don't hire me and quite honestly, that's not so awesome. And then the third thing that happens every so often is I may choose not to represent them in the sale of their home. Now, Cindy, you may be asking why I would turn down a listing. And, and you know, that would be a great question. And here's the reason I think you're gonna love the answer. If I feel a seller has a goal or an expectation that I cannot meet or exceed, I would rather turn the opportunity down today then let you down six months from now. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. <clears throat> Thank you. Perfect. So Cindy, in order for me to know if I can meet your goals and exceed your expectations, I need to ask you a couple of questions. Would that be okay? Yes. Okay, cool. So I'm going to bring up my whiteboard and I'm going to make notes as we're talking. And my first question is, so on a scale of one to 10, with one being not so great and 10 being awesome, what needs to happen in a sale of your home for you to consider this experience a 10? Well, you need to sell my home <laughs> for, for a good price. Cool, let's start there. Mm -hmm. Good price. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me, what does a good price look like to you? Well, um, I'm thinking that my house would probably sell for about 500,000 right now. Okay. So other people's have been selling for that or a little more. And mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Cool. And what does that do for you? What would get, what would getting $500,000 do for you and your family? Well, it would help me, uh, one, get moving, um to coral springs and uh out of my house here sooner and i would have the equity to be able to get into something there got it perfect i mean after all you deserve that don't you well i hope so <laughs> absolutely yeah so if we could accomplish a second goal so that this was a 10 plus experience what else needs to happen well, I'd love it if we'd close in 30 days. Hmm. Wow, that's quick. 
Well, things have been selling fast here. I mean, people sure. put stuff in the market and there's multiple offers. I mean, it's, we only have like, I, everyone keeps saying it's a hot, hot market. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And what would selling your home in 30 days do for you? Why is that important? Well, we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be moving there mm -hmm. uh, soon, you know, with all the stuff going on. Uh, <clears throat> My husband's got an opportunity there. So rather than kind of split up the family, we could all go and, and uh, make one move. Mm. So it sounds like a new job. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And when does he start? Um, April. Oh, no, 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 not April. Sorry. My, <laughs> this coronavirus is all a blur. Um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. April, May. So May 15th. Got it. But he could start June 1st. So, right, you know, it's kind of that two-week window. So, really, you know, we're just thinking it'd be nice to get a little settled before, you know. Yeah, and he's moving, right? I mean, if your yeah. home hasn't sold, he's still moving so he can start his new job June 1st, correct? Yeah. Hmm. That's pretty important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Okay. So if we could accomplish a third goal so that this is a 10 plus plus experience, what else needs to happen for, the, for you to consider the sale of your home a success? Um, you know, with, I, I just would want you to make sure you're bringing real buyers to my house, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, my son's here at the house. He's, you know, right now doing college online and I do my business here. So, you know, just obviously want it to be, yeah, smooth, actually perfect. Yep. Easy. That's all. I'm signing up for all of that. <laughs> so qualified buyers, the right buyers don't want to have lots and lots of showings, successful closing, all of that. Right, Cindy? Yes. Yeah. So if we could accomplish one of these goals and barely miss the other two, what's number one? Uh, well, I think price because that's, you know, going to impact what we can do when we move. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is super important. If we were able to get $500,000 for your home or as close to $500,000 as possible, however, your home isn't, under contract and you're not closed in 30 days, maybe it's 45 days, maybe it's 60 days and your family is split up for a short period of time. It's close, but it's not quite 30 days. And there's a few speed bumps along the way. That would still be a 10? Yeah, it wouldn't be a 10. It might be an eight or a nine, <laughs> but you know, but because, uh, you know, if we don't get there in 30 days, we've got some other expenses. I mean, obviously it starts balancing out mm -hmm. other expenses, right? So that's mm -hmm. not great, but mm -hmm. you know, I understand so here, that. Here's what I'm hearing, Cindy, and tell me if I'm hearing you wrong. What I'm hearing is that this goal might actually be more important than price. I think it could be, I think it's balance, right? I mean, because every, every time that we're not doing it, we're, the, the equity is getting eaten away. So, but at the end of the day, it's, it's probably a balance between what does it cost to have him there and not here versus, mm -hmm. you know, giving the house away, right? So that's yeah. an issue. Yeah. So if you had to choose between the two, and, and understand my, my job as your realtor, once you hire me, is to get all of these goals accomplished. And I'm just asking because this is how I'm gonna meet your goals and exceed your expectations. And there's going to come a time where we have to decide which one of these goals is more important. So just for the sake of conversation, if you had to pick one of them right now, you can't get them both accomplished. You're gonna barely miss one of them. What's number one? Well, if I'm going to barely miss one of them, then I, then I would definitely pick the 30 days as um, making the whole transaction, you know, the whole transition better for my family. Cool. Mm -hmm. So if we had your home under contract and you're sitting at the closing table 30 days from now so that you can move to Coral Springs and be with your family, your husband can start his new job. Families together, kids are with you, life is good and we got a little less than $500,000 for your home, 
and there's a few speed bumps along the way, that would be a 10. Mm -hmm. Yes? You know, a 10 in today's world, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously I want it all, but yeah, that would be, you know, again, that would be 10 for today, right? Perfect. Perfect, perfect. And if we could accomplish two of these goals and just barely miss the third, what's the second most important goal? Yes, so price. Yeah, I agree. I can deal with some speed bumps. You know that, I mean, again, yeah. we all do some hassles. We're living through, you know, a lot of bumps right now. That's just life. Yeah, 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 I get it. So if we were able to get your home sold and closed, you're sitting at the closing table 30 days from now, you're moving to Coral Springs with your husband so he can start his new job and your family is together. Um, we got close to 500,000, just missed it a little bit. And there's a few speed bumps along the way. That's a successful sale. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And Cindy, if I was able to demonstrate that I'm the right agent for the job to achieve these goals, would you hire me? Um, yeah. Cool. Let's get started. All right. So let's take a pause. So this is like a commercial break, right? Because I'm going to go to another share screen and we're going to get to another part of our conversation. What we just did is in the 10 step listing presentation, we went through begin the conversation. We're sitting at the kitchen table typically. In Zoom, I'm gonna sit at my kitchen table and I would have on a shirt, a tie, sport coat. I'm gonna dress for success. Even though I'm on a Zoom appointment, I'm gonna show up as a professional. And I'm gonna have the conversation with Cindy just like I would if I were sitting at the kitchen table. So what you just saw was begin the conversation. We did a needs analysis. We prioritized the needs and we did a trial close. Now also keep in mind that my goal from the moment I show up at Cindy's door or the moment I show up on her computer is to convey that I care about her, that she can trust me, and that I know what I'm doing. And this is about Cindy, it's not about me. So this, the needs analysis is critically important, and you guys saw the way that I pivoted the conversation away from how much money she was gonna get to how quickly her home was going to sell. Because I know that in order to get Cindy to move forward, I need to help her self-discover that how quickly her home sells is more important than the price she's gonna get. All right, talk to me before we move on to the next step. Questions, ahas? Well, John? Yeah. I noticed, I, again, you went for the self-discovery, asking her the right questions, tugging on her emotions as far as what's going to happen or how- Big it, time, big time. And, Additionally, you also use NLP, hire me, hire mm -hmm. yep. all that. Yep, absolutely. John? Yes. I loved it because on number two, which was the closing 30 days, you, you showed um, motivation. Yeah. Is that what that, motivation is key in anything we do? Yeah. In you know, pricing or you know, buying and selling. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. Great. That's probably the best listing presentation setup I've seen yet. And I've been Thank doing this 18 years. Thank you. So <laughs> write, this, write this down. Logic makes us think and emotion makes us act. And I really park on emotion big time. And that's the reason why I said three times, if we were able to get your home sold, you're sitting at the closing table, you're moving to Coral Springs with your family so that your husband can begin his job. Kids are with you. Life is good. It's important because that, that's future positive. Future negative is, Cindy, your home hasn't sold yet. It's 45 days from now. Your husband's already in Coral Springs. You're paying for two homes. Your family is split up. You're, you're still in Clearwater with the kids while your husband is, is in Coral Springs. How does that feel? Now I'm going to future negative, which is pain. And I'm going to park there until she makes the right decision. 
All right, let's transition to the next step and I'm gonna share a different screen with you. So Cindy, the next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to take a look at the properties that have sold recently and I'm going to share my screen with you. Uh, let me get to the right screen, this should be fun. Um, okay, I need to, all right, so, I might have to log out of my iPad, guys. I'm learning too as we go. I like it. My house is getting more expensive. It's good. Isn't that nice? That's yeah, nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is actually a different one that I want to show. All right, so we're looking at a comparative market analysis. This is working. Cool. And we've Perfect. got two properties that are in your neighborhood. You live in, you live in Parkland now, Cindy. Nice. Uh, we've got two homes in your neighborhood that are currently for sale. Uh, 6880 Longleaf, they're asking 995000 That one's been on the market for 37 days. And then we have 6940 Longleaf Drive, they're asking $1,098,000. And I want you to notice, though, they've been on the market for 376 days. So no I one's... I can't hear you, John. Really? Can you hear me now? No? Guys, I think we froze, hold on. Okay, hold on. Hmm. Everybody hang in there. <laughs> okay, John, you're back, unmute yourself. Great. There you love are. It, love it, how did that happen? All right, let's do this again. Love this. All right, so Cindy, uh, 6940 Longleaf Drive, they're at a million ninety-eight. Now yeah. this home's been on the market for 376 days. Yikes. Yeah, so I would actually say that home really isn't for sale. The seller just likes the way the sign looks in the front yard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now there's a couple homes that have sold. Uh, we've got 10027 uh, Mandarin Street. And that one sold at 967.5, uh, 42 days on the market. That sold back in December. We've also got 6970 Longleaf Drive, and that sold for 970, um, 122 days on the market. That's a recent sale. That one sold back in March. Now, both of these are comparable to your home and, and outside role play, guys. In real life, I'm gonna go a lot deeper into these properties. I'm gonna to go to the next screen and I'm going to look at each of these properties uh, in detail. In other words, I'm gonna go through the pictures yeah. so that Cindy can see how these homes compare to hers. And I'm not gonna do that for the purpose of this just because a real Zoom list appointment. Guys, nod your head if you can still hear me. Yes. Just making sure I didn't tune out again. A real Zoom list appointment is going to last an hour on average, maybe an hour and a half. Um, when I go on list appointments and I'm meeting with someone at their home, I could be there anywhere from two to four hours, depending on the market and depending on pricing conversation. So we're gonna go through these homes, we're gonna look at them, and for the purpose of this role play, I'm getting a rough idea where we need to price Cindy's home. And Cindy, it's looking like we're somewhere in that $950 to $1 million range. Okay. Cool with that? Yeah. Good. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna look at supply and demand in Parkland. And we're gonna scroll down to, give me just a moment. Would you have all of these or would you just put up the one that applied? Just the one that applies. Okay. Good question. So Cindy, hmm, that's interesting. This is an older email. I'm sorry, guys. We'll just pretend at the end. All right, so let's do this. I'm gonna to switch to a different screen. We're gonna take you off share here and I'm gonna to go to share on my, on my iPad. And Cindy, here's what I'm seeing. All right. From 900 to 950,000, we have 18 active listings. 
And in the last six months, there were 12 that sold, which means we have two selling every 30 days, which means we have a nine month supply of inventory. And from 950 to 1 million, we have 21 that are active. And in the last six months, there were 21 that sold. So three are selling every 30 days and we have a seven month supply of inventory. Now here's what typically happens. I'm gonna go to a different screen and let's get out of red and go to black. What typically happens if you look at the market in a market where this line is money and this is time and values are going up, this would be a great seller's market. And we're looking at a comparable property that sold for $970,000. In this market, we could price your property at a million dollars because values are going up. And even if we don't get an offer right away, the market's gonna come up to you. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And we also have markets where the values are doing this. In other words, prices are coming down. Mm -hmm. And this typically happens when you get above six months because there are more properties for sale and fewer buyers and sellers are pushing the prices down by lowering their price. And here's my concern. My concern is if we look at a comparable property and that home sold for 970,000, and we price our listing at 1 million and values are coming down. We're above the market, aren't we? Mm -hmm. What typically happens here, Cindy, is zero days on the market, 30 days on the market, 60 days, 90 days, 120, and 180 is somewhere around 45 days on the market the seller will bring their price down to where they should have been when they started. And unfortunately, the value of the comparable has also dropped. So even though the seller has brought their price down, they're still above the market. Does that make sense? Yeah, I never thought of that, but I appreciate, I mean, that, that this doesn't look good, but that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then 60 days out, the seller brings their price down again, and unfortunately, the, the value of the comparable property has dropped again as well. So we're still above the market. Mm. And this just keeps going on until 180 days out, the property didn't sell. My biggest concern in a market like this is not that you're gonna get less money for your home than you want. My biggest concern is not gonna sell and you're still here six months from now. And Cindy, you don't want that to happen, do you? Yeah, no, that can't happen. No, I agree. So here's what we need to do in order to get your property sold. We're in a market where we have six, eight months of inventory or more. And the last property that's sold that's comparable to yours is $970,000. And when you're in a market where values, where you have more than eight months of inventory, values are coming down. And here's how we're gonna get your home sold. We need to price your property below the last property that sold. Now it doesn't have to be significantly below, but it needs to be below the last property that sold and keep in mind that there are 21 active listings and there are three selling every 30 days. So in order to sell your home, you've gotta be one of the top three properties. In order to be one of the top three properties, you have to be top third in condition and bottom third in price. In other words, you have to beat the competition if you wanna sell your home. Now, knowing that, 
where do you feel we need to be in order to get your home sold so that you can close in 30 days and be with your husband, your children in Coral Springs in order for your husband to start his new job? Well, before you showed me that, I was really hoping to be, you know, at like 975 because I know what my neighbor sold for and I know my house is nicer, but um, I guess I'm curious what you think as far as like what is a little bit below, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, actually things have been going up so much. I, at one point I, I was kind of optimistic and thinking, you know, 980 or 990, but, um, but yeah. this is kind of scary, right? I don't, I mean, I, I don't want to. I don't want to be sitting here, you know, paying for it and watching it go down. That's, that's awful. Yeah. And you're looking at the same data that I am. Right. And here's the I, other thing we know markets go up, markets come down. And over time, if you follow the trend line, they're going up. The challenge is <clears throat> if you look at the market of the moment, there's four stages. Stage number one, we have appreciating market values. Stage two is the peak. And that's kind of where we are right now. And then stage three, we have depreciating values. And stage four, we've hit the bottom. And the question is, where are we today? And, and quite honestly, I believe we're somewhere in here. And if this is today, and the last property that sold, sold for $970,000, my question would be, do you want to price at the current market or in front of the market? A better way for me to say that would be, do you want to create the market or chase the market, Cindy? And no, I don't want to chase it. I mm -hmm. guess, you know, the question is looking at those others, mm -hmm. um, you know, and you're talking about 970, mm -hmm. how far do I have to cut, you know, be under that to, to be in that category? You talked about the top three. What do you think? Yeah. So looking at homes from 950 to a million dollars in order to be in the top three, we need to be in the bottom third of that price range. And in order to be in the bottom third of that price range, we're looking at $960,000. Okay. Well, I mean, it's not what I, you know, obviously it's not what I want, but you know, mm -hmm. what I was thinking, but the flip side is, you know, I'm, I spend $5,000 a month in expenses here, right? So every yeah. day that I'm not sold, I'm, I'm eating away at what would have been nine seventy five. So... So let me ask you another question because I want you to feel good about this. Yeah. If we sold your home today for 960000 so that you can move to Coral Springs with your family, your husband could start his new job, you've got your family around you with your children, and you sold your house for nine sixty, it kind of feels like you're giving your home away. What if you knew a year from now your home is going to be worth nine twenty five? How do you feel about it now? I'm like, give me some 960. <laughs> yeah, you're not giving your home away, are you? No. Yeah. How long have you lived in your home? Uh, six years. Yeah. And what did you pay? Um, 800. Yeah. Yeah. So at $960,000, you made $160,000. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's 20%. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, I told you it's been hot here. Yeah. And you've lived in your home for how long? Six years. Six years. And if you could buy a stock on the, on the stock market and you knew you were going to make 20% in six years, would you buy it? Yeah. Aren't you kind of doing that right now? Tell me how. Well, you're selling your home. You're making $160,000 on the sale. That's a 20% increase. Yeah. It's a 20% return. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. So what should we do? It sounds like maybe cash out before it drops like the stock market. Okay. <laughs> like right yeah. now might be the right time. Cool. Uh, so you ready to get started? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
Guys, that was a revised version. Trust me, there's parts that I left out. There's things that we could have gone deeper in. And that's what a listing presentation on Zoom would look like. Very, very similar to that. Give me some ahas, ask questions. Cindy, but first, first of all, Cindy. Yeah. Remember my goal. My goal is to convey that I care about you, you can trust me, and I know what I'm doing. Tell me how that felt. Yeah, it felt really good. And I love the way you changed. You didn't get into this curve early. You showed the down and the up and the down. And so, and then where that was. Um, and obviously I do this every day and I was like, that's impactful. So it really uh, made a lot of sense for what that felt like. And it was what, it was very, it was very visual, but simple, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, and, you know, when you said a little bit below where the last one sold, you saw, I kept asking you like, what does that look like? Right. Cause I'm thinking, how do I get there? I mean, it was kind of like obvious that, that, you know, I don't want to be there. Um, and I thought it was, it was impactful when you sort of went to the lower number and took it back to the stock market because we all just saw people lose a ton in the stock market that they're mm -hmm. not going to recover from for years. So mm -hmm. if I've really got to move, mm -hmm. I got to look at getting the equity I have and what can I do to get that for me? That's what I yeah. thought. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Did you feel Thank like you. I care? Did you feel like I care about you? Yeah. I didn't feel like, I didn't feel like any of it was about you getting a listing, like nothing right. about that. It was, I felt like it was very um, educational and actually you know, the context was not even like, what are you going to do to market my home? What, you know, all the details, it was like, it was like, this guy knows what's going on and he's on the ball and I, and I need to like follow, you know, let's get this done. Right. So, I, so that. Right. What if you would have stuck to your guns and said, I get it. And I still want a million dollars. In other words, I'm not going to hire you unless you list my property for a million dollars. Think about how the conversation started. So one of three things happen when I meet with a potential seller. Number mm -hmm. one, right? Number three is if they feel they have a goal or an expectation that I cannot meet or exceed, I would rather turn the opportunity down than let you down. So in that situation, if I had a seller say, I've got to get a million dollars. If you list my home for a million, I'm hiring you. In that situation, my response would simply be, Cindy, remember we spoke at the beginning of our meeting and I shared with you that one of the things that happens when I meet with a potential seller is sometimes I turn the opportunity down. And you see, if I feel that someone has a goal or an expectation that I can't meet or exceed, I'd rather turn the opportunity than let you down. And unfortunately, I think this is one of those times. I feel that you have a goal and an expectation that I can't meet or exceed. So we're going to have to part friends. Mm -hmm. The takeaway. Yeah. And don't be surprised if you hear, whoa, wait a minute. You're going you're gonna to leave? <laughs> you're not going to list my home? Um, unfortunately, no. And don't be surprised if you hear, okay, wow, I didn't know you were willing to walk away. Go ahead. List it at 960. Yeah. Powerful guys. All right, we're over time. Couple more ahas, and then we're gonna say goodbye for the weekend, and we're gonna get into action and get on the phone and start talking to people. I have a question. Yeah, Angel. How did you project 925 in 2021? So Gary Keller in Shift says that pricing conversations in a shifting market are both a science and a skill. And the skill set is analyzing trends and determining what's going to happen based on current market conditions. And Angel, all I'm doing is I'm taking a look at how the market is trending and my best guess, and it's a guess, on what's going to happen to prices based on what's happening in the market. Okay. I could be wrong. Okay. Well, John, 
it, John, if I mean, just for a quickie, if you took 960 and you took 90% of that, I mean, you're at 864. So I actually think it's probably optimistic at 925, right? Could be. Yeah. I mean, so, so uh, again, I, I uh, yeah, even if it's, you took, I, I, it's a good point. I might even put like 5% or something and see what that is. So you're like, well, do you think the market might correct 5%? Right. I mean, just curious, throw it back on them, right? Yeah. So. In 2008, we saw values drop at about an average of 1% a month, right? Yeah. Okay, Kim, I saw you pop up there. Did you have something to say? Yeah, thanks. I just, I just love that presentation that it is 100% focused on your client and the market and nothing mm -hmm. about you and how, you know, how many homes you've sold, how many years you've been doing this, how great KW is. Do you put any of those kind of shiny slides in a presentation usually? Not or at all. is it all? I, I love that. I no. love it. <laughs> no. And, and, and this is the same listing presentation that I've been using for 20 years, Kim. And it's the same, not bragging. This is just numbers. It's the same listing presentation that I use to list an average of 12 to 15 homes every month for more than 10 years. And I never used um, visuals. It was me. Just having a conversation with you, just like I did with Cindy right now. John, that was amazing. The whiteboard stuff with showing the curves and you know handwriting it as you're explaining it mm. was right on. You know, and one of the things that I like is this is actually more impactful by Zoom. That part of it is than sitting at the kitchen table. When I'm sitting I, at the kitchen table, I have a legal pad. I have a notebook in front of me. Everything that I was drawing is on a notebook. And when I'm sitting at the kitchen table, I have a legal pad in front of me and I'm drawing on the legal pad. And I've got Cindy sitting across the table and she's seeing what I'm drawing. However, it's not as impactful as it is via Zoom. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you. Yeah, 100%, 100%. I'm here for you guys. Do me a favor, if you got value, if you learn something today that you're going to be able to use to build a more successful real estate career, uh, I've got two favors to ask you. Number one, when you get the link to my YouTube page, please watch the video and comment on it. And my second ask is share this link. Share this link with other real estate agents who you know should be on these 930 calls. My best guess is we're gonna be doing this for the next 60 to 90 days. I don't think that this is something that's gonna be over in a week or two. I believe that we're in a marathon. Like James Shaw said on his call this morning, we're in an ultra marathon uh, and I won't stop. I won't stop doing this as long as you guys keep tuning in and giving me the opportunity to pour into you, I'll be here. Thank you, John. Got it. You guys have a great day. Have a great weekend, John. 100%. 100%. Everybody have a great day. Thank you. Great weekend, everybody. Thank you again, John. Pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Bye.